Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to use matte caps inside of the EV real-time rendering engine. There are a few reasons why you might want to do this. First of all, the OpenGL viewport does give you a nice set of controls for making complex objects look really nice with minimal effort, but it is still a bit limiting. Say we had an object with our matte cap, but we wanted to get a nice render of it, we won't really be able to do that. In 2.79, there used to be an option for being able to do an OpenGL render, which would take a snapshot of your viewport and then render that into a, an image. But that option seems to have disappeared with 2.8. If you want to make use of Eevee's extra functionality, such as the post-processing tools, and be able to render our object with a matte cap, then we would have to find a way to let Eevee render matte caps onto an object. So what I've done is tried to find a way to make this work. So today I'm going to be running you through the system that I've got going. You'll be able to have a look at all the object and world nodes as well if you want to copy it down for yourself. It will give you a lot of stylistic control over the way that things look. So the point about matte caps is that it's supposed to be a way to fake a material surface with lighting. Now typically you wouldn't use matte caps in a rendered setting with scene lighting and it would feel kind of counterintuitive because you would be mixing fake lighting with real lighting. But for the sake of stylization, doing exactly this can provide some cool results, which is why I've been interested in putting this together. The first thing we need to sort out is actually getting a matte cap image to behave as expected in rendered mode. This will involve some material node trickery to get the projection looking right. If I create a material called matte cap 1 and go into the material nodes, the first thing I need to do is create a geometry node and a vector transform node. I'll take the normal output from the geometry node and plug it into the vector input of the vector transform node. Now because matte caps rely on the direction of the camera to project properly onto the surface of the object, we're going to select normal and convert object to camera. Then we're going to create a mapping node and pass on the vector. I'll change the type to point and change the X and Y in both location and scale to 0.5. From there we can actually bring the matte cap image in. So what I'm going to do is put down an image texture node and load up a test matte cap that I've prepared earlier. Now this isn't a very practical matte cap because it's got this big black dot in the middle, but this is just to test whether or not the projection is actually working properly. We will then replace it later on with a more practical image. To afford us some extra color control, I'm going to place down a mix RGB node and change it to color. This will allow us to add some extra colorization to the matte cap image. Now just to test this out, if I try it in cycles, we can see that the projection is working fine. And now if I swap over to Eevee, it's also working perfectly fine too. Now believe it or not, when I started putting this together a few days ago, it didn't actually work in Eevee. There was an issue with the mapping. The very next day I downloaded the next daily build and it was working perfectly fine, which just goes to show how quickly 2.8 is improving. So now that we've got the matte caps working as a material, it means we can do all sorts of fun with lighting and effects. What I'm going to do is start to put an environmental texture on the world to get some nice subtle lighting surrounding the object. The easy way to do this is to go to the World Settings tab, press Use Nodes, then press on the dot next to Color and choose Environment Texture. In the Texture slot we can add an HDRI. You can go to HDRI Haven to get all kinds of HDRIs for free. It's an incredible resource and it's absolutely free thanks to the support they're getting from their Patreon. There's also a companion website called Texture Haven where you can get free textures as well. I recommend checking them out because it's brilliant stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is replace the test matte cap with a more practical black and white one, and then shift the color a bit. The reason why I'm using a black and white one is so that we can have a full creative control over the color using our color node. If we were using a matte cap that already had color, then we would have less control over it afterwards because any new color we wanted to add would be mixed with the original. There's nothing wrong with that though. If you want to use a matte cap with its own color, you can just plug it in and turn the fact value to zero, or alternatively plug it straight into the shader color input. Jim Morin shared a collection of free matte caps a couple of years ago that you can download and play around with. I'll leave a link to his tweet in the description. In fact, here's a little tip. If you find a matte cap that you like the shading of, but you don't like the color, what you can do is either hue shift it, or alternatively, you can desaturate it to make it black and white, and then colorize the black and white version afterwards. This will let you choose a new color for it without the old color data distorting your choice. Since we've got the environment texture set up for the world, we can see that it's leaving some nice color lighting data around the object. We can change the intensity of this to make the effect more or less pronounced. But here's the thing, I'd like the EV mode to act more like the OpenGL viewport. After all, all I want to do is have more extensive control over matte caps and still be able to render them with some extra control. I don't really want to be able to see this pixelated HDRI background. What I want to do is be able to hide this background in the rendered mode. Thankfully, this is a fairly simple thing to do in the world nodes. What we need to do is create a mix shader node and a light path node 
and then plug the is camera ray output into the fac input of the mix shader node. If I create another background node with an RGB node and then connect them together, then plug both our background nodes into the mix shader, then the environment texture will be hidden in the viewport. The RGB node that we created will now be our background color for the viewport. I'm going to jump ahead to an example that I've already prepared where I've enabled extra effects like screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, bloom, and volumetrics. I think it's looking pretty cool. You can see the difference between the regular viewport and Eevee as I switch between them, and I think you'll agree that one of these looks a lot better than the other. Of course, since we can use the matcap image with practically any shader that we like, it means that we can get some really interesting effects going. In this case, I have it plugged into the principled BSDF shader. What this means is that we have some good control over things like subsurface scattering, metallic and roughness values, specularity and clear coating. If we want to make use of subsurface scattering, we need to make sure that it's enabled in the EV render settings tab. One trick regarding the subsurface scattering value I want to share is that even having it on just a tiny amount can make a huge difference to details. For example, look closely at this varied topology. At a subsurface value of zero, it looks kind of ugly. We can see that there's not really enough geometry to make the lighting bounce off the surface correctly, but if we turn the subsurface value up to something even just tiny, like 0.01, the difference is quite immense. It means those harsh transitions are much more subtle, almost like we're performing some smoothing on the mesh without actually changing anything about it. Of course, when it comes to changing these values, it entirely depends on what kind of stylistic effect you are looking for. When it comes to metallic and roughness, I like to find a delicate balance between the two where the metallic value is slightly increased and the roughness is slightly decreased, so it's not an extreme change on either side. So now that we've got a nice setup going in Eevee to display our models with matte caps, as an alternative to the regular workbench viewport, as some people like to call it, is there anything we can do to push it further? Well, if we take a look at the regular shading settings for the workbench matte caps, there's some cavity settings to accentuate high regions of geometry and dark and lower regions. But how would we control this in Eevee? Well, it's a little bit different in Eevee. Technically, we've already achieved the darkening of lower regions by using the ambient occlusion post-processing feature. As for brightening the higher areas of the geometry, we can make use of the pointiness output of the geometry node and use it to provide different shader data to other regions of the mesh and then mix them together to create cool results. At the current point in time, the pointiness data doesn't work with Eevee, but I expect it won't take too long before they gets properly ported over. However, the pointiness node does work in cycles, as what I've done is made a duplicate of this file and set it up to use cycles instead. What I mean by that is that I've unplugged the volumetric scattering so we can preview our changes quickly. If I create a color ramp and then plug the pointiness output from the geometry node into the fac input of the color ramp, and then plug the color output of the color ramp into the fac input of the mix shader, I'll then be able to mix shader data together. If I create another principled shader and plug both of them into the mix shader node and then use this as the surface output, we will see the results start to appear. The handles on the color ramp need to be close together, somewhere near the middle, to get this result. And we can press the icon with a double-sided arrow to invert the values, letting us choose between higher and lower areas of geometry. So yes, you could also use this to get a shadowy effect as well. You can get really creative with using this data to create fancy new materials that are reactive to the geometry without requiring any UV mapping and texture masking. So going back to the EV example, what I've done is actually create a two minute animation to show off our system. I'll let this play and then we'll reconvene at the end.
hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring that bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.